Wouldn't it be great if everybody had the opportunity to learn to play a musical instrument? That's basically our uh, motto slash mission statement here, is to provide absolutely everybody with the opportunity to learn to play a musical instrument. The Joe Chillin Memorial Instrument Lending Library is like most public libraries, but instead of lending out books, they have a collection of over 750 instruments that local residents can borrow free of charge. Welcome to Wouldn't It Be Great, an exploration of music accessibility. My name is Brent Moore, and for the next hour, I'm going to introduce you to some of the people who make Joe's Mill such an incredible place. You'll hear from Roger Eccleston, the musical instrument librarian. Every community that has a book library should have a musical instrument lending library. Arwen Robinson and her mother Jenny will talk about their experiences borrowing instruments. I think it's a great idea because you can go and borrow instruments for free and it really encourages people to try them out. It's a, a very worthwhile expense to take lessons, but you know, as the kids grow, um, it's, it's hard to actually to buy the instrument. So this has allowed us to keep going. And Terry Snyder, the president of Joe's Mill, will drop by to explain a bit about how the library is financially sustained. It's like running a business, except we don't sell a product. We give it away. The theme of this documentary is music accessibility making sure every single person can access musical instruments. For a closer look at this, we will hear from Chris Trimmer, a local mental health worker who started a music group at a downtown shelter. Sometimes we'd talk about mental health, you know, other times it would just be, you know, about having fun playing music. Produced for CFRC 101.9 in Kingston, Ontario, this is Wouldn't It Be Great? Music Accessibility and Joe's Mill. If people who have nothing else have the opportunity to pick up an instrument and play, they have something in their life now. I think the, uh, the, the name actually sums it up. We are a, a musical instrument lending library. And uh, very similar to uh, a book library that most uh, most communities have, uh, you sign up, you get yourself uh, registered as a borrower, and then you, you borrow books for a period of time, read them, bring them back. Same with the, the instruments here, you, you borrow an instrument and hopefully learn to play it or play it a little bit better, and then try something else. That was Roger Eccleston, the musical instrument librarian. He's the first friendly face you'll see when you walk into Joe's Mill. Yeah, my name's Roger Eccleston. I am the librarian at the Joe Chetham Memorial Musical Instrument Lending Library. Uh, I've been here around about five, maybe a little bit uh, longer years now. It seems like a lifetime, but uh, we've just been really blessed with donations over the last few months. And we used to say, well, we've over 600 instruments, but they've been coming in so thick and fast. The last look, we're a lot closer to 750 items of all shapes and sizes, every, every denomination. If you live less than 50 kilometers from the library, you can register as a borrower. There is a one-time sign-up fee of $10, and you can start borrowing instruments on the spot. We require residency or proof of residency, uh, even temporary residency. Obviously, we have a lot of students from Queen's St. Lawrence RMC uh, coming in. Uh, and it's a 50 kilometer radius from the instrument library. So if you are resident within that 50 kilometer radius, then uh, you're entitled to uh, register, get your borrower's card and borrow instruments from the library. The basic loan period is four weeks at a time. Uh, even if loans are going to be extended or renewed, we do require the, the equipment or instrument to come back for examination. Unlike library books, there's lots of screws and wires and springs and bits and pieces, uh, strings that need renewing on the instruments, so we do require them to, to come back after every four weeks. The mill has three part-time staff members as well as a number of volunteers and supporters. 
most of whom dedicate their time simply because they believe in music accessibility and Joe's Mill. This makes the library a wonderful place to work. I think I enjoy every single aspect of this job. Meeting new people all the time, obviously the, the, the equipment here as well, and the satisfaction of being able to, to help people discover the absolute joy of playing a musical instrument. It's taken for granted that uh, every community has a book library. If you speak music, you can communicate with anybody of any age, any skin colour, any religion, any gender, anywhere in the world. Music is the universal leveller. And so I, I think to encourage people to learn and understand a musical instrument, it's all about communicating with the rest of the world. It's, uh, it's, it's the great communication tool, music. So you think that there should be other lending libraries? In other I think every community that has a book library should have a musical instrument lending library. You know it makes sense. <laughs> The Instrument Lending Library was set up as a memorial to Joe Chitlin. He's, he's actually from Port Dover, Ontario, originally, and uh, studied music here in, in Kingston, and made an awful lot, a lot of musical friends, and played with many, many different bands. Uh, he was the bass player with Sarah Harmer's uh, band Weeping Tile, uh, so he was doing kind of... Uh, Contemporary pop rock there, I would guess. Uh, he played with the the Celtic punk band the Mahones. He was bass player with them. He played lounge lizard uh, jazz Sinatra stuff and that with Haskell and the Cleavers. They played every Thursday night down at the brew pub, and he would put on his mismatched suit and brightly coloured shirt and tie and play his stand-up bass for that and uh, would pretty much play for anybody at any time given the need he fronted a couple of, uh, of funk bands himself not only was he a, an accomplished musician he was a singer and songwriter as well while on tour in Amsterdam with the Mahones Chitlin experienced an allergic reaction and passed away his family and friends have kept his memory alive through the Joe Chitlin Memorial Instrument Lending Library. Here's Sarah Harmer with You Are Here, a song she wrote in memory of Joe. Are there no blinders on lights that blare? White noise on the eyes. From gas station lights and reflected eyes glare, so that I can walk home by moonlight alone.
Roger works closely with Terry Snyder, the president of the Instrument Lending Library. Terry has played in Go For Broke and Tanglefoot. My name's Terry Snyder, and um, I've been the president of uh, Dose Melder a little over two years, maybe two and a half years, and I've been on the board of directors for over four years now. I'm a volunteer, um, like all the people on the board and most of the people that are involved in Dose are volunteers. I do have a full-time job, uh, and... Uh, this is also a full-time job. It's, uh, it's a huge undertaking to keep running and to keep it financed. It's, uh, it's, it's a real balancing act uh, to do that. And then, you know, at break or something or at lunch, I'll be looking at my phone and seeing all kinds of emails coming in from Joe's Mill trying to organize things or, or uh, you know, get back to people. And then definitely after work, uh, I'm probably spending... Any, anywhere from like 20 minutes to two and a half, three hours uh, some nights on uh, uh, um, administration. It's like running a business except we don't sell a product. We give it away. Terry estimates it costs $7 a month to house an instrument at the lending library. This includes storage, maintenance, and repairs. We have a couple of good foundations that have been very supportive of us in town. Um, if you look at our website, uh, the first one on the list is the uh, and an Edward Churchill Foundation. Um, they, they support education and opportunities for youth. And really that's where we're about to, is, is giving youth opportunities and, and people who haven't had the chance to, uh, um, to play music or wouldn't otherwise have the chance to play music. A number of these young people have turned around and organized fundraisers for the Instrument Lending Library. People love the idea. And we have a lot of people that are doing fundraising for us, bands. Uh, they'll put on a show at the mansion or, or, you know, or somewhere else in town. And um, it's a fundraiser for Joe's Mill. Why? Because that's where they got their start with their instrument. They came in. The first time they picked up an instrument, they wouldn't have been able to play if it hadn't been for us. When Joe's Mill first opened, a number of local businesses were apprehensive. The music stores have, have been very generous to us. Uh, give us uh, excellent prices for strings and uh, parts that we need, which seems kind of counterintuitive. You know, when we first opened up, I think some of the music stores were scratching their heads saying, well, this is going to hurt, you know, this is going to cut into my business. People aren't going to come in and buy an instrument anymore. Well, what happens is they borrow an instrument when they're a kid, or some adults will come in and, and they'll borrow an instrument, and after they had borrowed it and renewed their, their loan for four or five months, they think, gee, I really like this. And they'll go into one of the music stores in Kingston and buy an instrument outright. And simply because they have the experience of trying one. They wouldn't have done that before. Terry believes that playing music can have a profound impact on people. So music accessibility becomes an important topic. If, if people who have nothing else have the opportunity to pick up an instrument and play, they have something in their life now. Okay. 
it it changes it changes their mind it changes their body it changes your brain you take a young person a child and they learn to play uh, something and they start to enjoy it okay they get lost in it okay they're they're now in the present they're they're not you know worried about the past or worried about tomorrow or or focusing on their problems they everything disappears our biggest problem is we're, we're getting too well known so what we're doing is we're looking at different ways to deal to to spread spread this what we have our, our good fortune around next we are going to hear from chris trimmer with the help of joe's mill he's been able to provide musical instruments for people who use local shelters uh, my name is Chris Trimmer. Uh, I work at uh, Frontenac Community Mental Health uh, and Addiction Services here in town. It's a community mental health organization. Uh, I work on the crisis team. Trimmer and co-worker Rich Tayo have set up a music group at Piers of the Roundtable, a local mental health drop-in center. We were asked by our manager if, you know, how can you reach out to certain uh, people in the community that um, it's hard for a mental health agency to reach out to. So folks like who might use local shelters. Um, and so being, uh, you know, massive music bands, we were uh, naturally uh, kind of suggested um, starting a music group and using music as a way to kind of connect with people. So we just go down there every Thursday, um, you know, bring a few instruments um, and you know, just kind of jam out some songs. Like sometimes we'd talk about mental health, you know, other times it would just be, you know, about having fun playing music. The idea caught on and the pair thought about ways to improve. Hey, this is cool to do it for an hour a week, but what about the rest of the week? Um, so we approached the mill about, um, you know, perhaps donating uh, a guitar or two. And they were very receptive to the idea and very generous uh, right off the hop. Um, they donated two guitars, um, two peers of the round table. Um, so those guitars are there permanently now, um, at no cost. Uh, they donated them, and um, and it's great. So the, the you know the folks there have access to music kind of all the time now. You know we went in there as mental health workers, um, but really uh, you know we went in there as peers. You know they love music, we love music. That's a common bond that we can share. And, you know, one of the cool things was, like, I think it was, like, uh, you know, after six months of going down there every week, you know, one of the fellows who had seen us continually every single week, I think something came up where we mentioned, it's like, oh, we got to get back to work. And he's like, work? Like, what do you do? And he was like, well, we're, we're mental health workers. And he's like, really? I had no idea. I thought you were just do, two dudes that were into music that we should stop by every week. Um, so, you know... It, like that's kind of a cool response to hear because it kind of breaks down the stigma just associated with mental health. A lot of times, uh, you know, we can just be seen as mental health workers. So there's already a barrier there. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a lot of other differences. Like, you know, we're not accessing the shelter system. So there's experiences that they have that... Um, while we might be somewhat familiar with it, uh, we haven't kind of looked in their shoes. So to uh, kind of take away those differences right off the hop, what the first thing we do in uh, you know the music group is if there's a lot of new people there, um, we'll go around and people will say their name, uh, but more importantly they'll say what's their favorite music. So just like their name, it, it kind of sets an identity for them. And it kind of shows that like we all have these unique identities but the cool thing is like every person says the response with like uh enthusiasm and with excitement because it's like you know everybody likes to kind of talk about their favorite music and so it's we're already connecting because it's like you know you like punk and i like country but we both love music so you know that's the thing that connects us right away trimmer and his music group have benefited from the generosity of joe's mill you know every time i'd go into the mill and say hi to roger you know i'd uh, you know, just happened to mention, like, hey, you got any more guitars kicking around that you guys aren't using? And, you know, and he was, he's always great about it. He will, like, he'd be like, get this wide look in his wide eyes and, you know, just go into the back. He's like, oh, I got something for you. And he'll come out with a couple more guitars or, you know, some uh, shakers or, you know, drums or different instruments. And he's just like, here you go, take them. And, you know, so we've been able to now 
uh, donate to three different shelters other, uh, in addition to Peers of the Round Table in Kingston. These guitars have been lent on a permanent loan basis and are not expected to return to the mill for regular checkups. Trimmer believes that this is a good fit for a shelter or a drop-in center and the people who use those facilities. Yeah, and that's actually, I think, the really cool part about it. It's like a, uh, you know, there's no strings attached. Like, you know, we don't have to say, like, here's a guitar, but can you kind of take care of it, you know? And, like, the reality is um, there's a lot of different people uh, kind of coming in and out of those places. It's by no means expected that they're going to last forever. Um, you know, so it's more of like, here's a guitar, you know, please get as much good use out of it as you can, but if something happens to it, um, you know, don't worry about it. And I think that's a really neat thing, because, you know, then it doesn't have to be, uh, like, locked up all the time, you know, so it's there for enjoyment. Towards the end of our interview, Chris spoke of the library as a source of pride for local residents. We are incredibly, incredibly lucky as a community to have something uh, like a music instrument lending library. Like, even now I'm still surprised that, uh, you know, Kingston has something like that. Um, it's such an amazing resource and just uh, the, the, even just the idea behind it that, you know, music should be accessible to everybody. Chris Trimmer plays the theremin for the Gertrudes. Here's their song, People in Your Neighborhood.
There's a, a, a lot of students who are interested, if not obliged, to play music or, or, or to learn to play music at school and uh, would need to find an instrument themselves because they're just not available through the, the program. And this is where we, we come in and we do provide an awful lot of instruments for school programs. You're listening to Wouldn't It Be Great, a documentary on music accessibility and Joe's Mill. My name is Brent Moore. This piece is part of the Robert Black Residency Program. We just heard a clip from Roger. Now we're going to check back with Terry Snyder, the president of Joe's Mill. After that, we're going to hear from Arwen Robinson and her mother Jenny, local residents who borrow instruments from the library. When the doors open, you need two people on shift. Someone's bringing an instrument back. Somebody's trying to check one out. And it's, it, it's not like buying a piece of gum. Okay, because there's, there, there's, there's a certain amount of, of uh, um, rigor that has to go with it. When the instrument comes back, it has to be checked for damage and defects. Okay, and if it's overdue, uh, we have a small uh, fine structure uh, just to help people remember to bring it back. And, and people are really great with it. You know, they, they might owe us a dollar or two dollars or sometimes they'll give us ten dollars and say, hey, look, you know, this is great. You guys have got a great service going on here. And it's not just students who are borrowing instruments. We have a, a good number of uh, older people, uh, retired people who've never picked up an instrument or picked one up when they were, you know, in high school or used to play guitar or something like that. And they, gee, now I'm retired. I'd like to, I'd like to try it out again. And and, and maybe I'd like to try a banjo or you know, or, or I've never played sax before. We'll go in and try that. And and it's it's terrific. You know, you can just see the they're like little kids, and all of a sudden you look at their faces. It's like they're in a candy shop. And a lot of kids uh, coming in, especially uh, teenagers, uh, who, are, who are looking for that electric guitar, They're, they want to start a band. Uh, we've had a number of kids who've come in, picked up the first instruments, got into bands, and, and now, eight, seven, eight years later, they're, they're putting on a, um, uh, a benefit for us somewhere. You know, it's, it's terrific. Schools, right now we've got uh, 76 instruments out to students of the Limestone Board of Education and the various music programs that they, they are putting on. These are kids who probably wouldn't have been able to um, take part in the music program because they, their parents could not afford to buy an instrument um, and most likely not afford to rent the instrument either. Your, your average rental is about twenty eight fifty a month. That's a substantial amount of money for, for a family that's pressed. Next, we're going to hear from Arwen Robinson and her mother, Jenny. Arwen and her siblings have been borrowing instruments from Joe's Mill for several years now. My name is Arwen, and I play the violin. Outside of school, and recently, this is the third year, I've taken a group violin class at school with some of my other classmates. The school runs a violin program for students in grade 4 and 5. Arwen and her friends wanted to keep learning after they moved on to grade 6 and found a teacher willing to help them. Arwen and her mother Jenny learned about Joe's Mill from their private violin instructor. When I had outgrown my half-size violin, she didn't think that I would be in the three-quarter size of violin very long, so she suggested borrowing a violin from Joe's Mill. I was always very interested to see all the different instruments and sometimes they would uh, give us a demonstration on how to play some of them. Once I went in there and the guy Roger showed me how to play a mandolin, I think it's a great idea because you can go and borrow instruments for free and it really encourages people to try them out. When my grandfather's come, we have borrowed a banjo for him. Uh, we were able to purchase some great piano books there, folk tunes, so that I could learn to play them. Arwen and Jenny have also given back to the instrument library. For my birthday party, I was asking for money, and after, well, part of it was to go to Joe's Mill, and the other half was to be put towards getting a full-size violin for me. 
Arwen was able to donate $145 to the library. I do classical violin, so I follow the Suzuki book in my lessons. But then in my group lessons, our teacher often lets us give requests, so there's so it varies there. But I also play fiddle tunes um, that I do, and I sometimes do play those at family gatherings. Arwen's mother Jenny called the mill a wonderful idea. And such a great opportunity uh, for kids and adults. Um, yeah, to, to have to have these instruments available to them that they can borrow and try out and have fun with. Um, it's uh, it's made such a difference for us. You know, it's an it's um, a very worthwhile expense to take lessons. But you know, as the kids grow, um, it's it's hard to actually to buy the instruments as they grow as well. So this has allowed us to keep going. And uh, her Arwen has two sisters, and they borrowed a guitar and a bagpipe chanter <laughs> and lots of things to try out. Um, yeah, her uh, her teacher Danielle Lennon um, uh, was uh, had lots of great things to say about the mill, and that's why we ended up going there, and we're so glad we did. And even though Arwen has her own violin, I'm sure we'll be visiting it quite frequently. We're sad that it's not going to be in our neighborhood anymore, but I think the new home will be great. Here's a clip of Arwen Robinson playing violin in studio. Terry Snyder is contacted regularly by people in other cities looking to start their own instrument lending library, but many of these fledgling projects never get off the ground. No one else has this, and, and it's true, there's no one else in Canada. We're getting inquiries from the states. There's, there's no one doing this. We're getting inquiries from England. We're getting inquiries from, the last one we got last week was from Montreal. Um, and you know, thinking, gee, I'd like to start a musical instrument lending library. And then I guess what happens is it looks kind of onerous. We, we started with a handful of instruments, in, basically in a, in a, in a closet in, in, in the library, I think, at, at St. Lawrence College. And that handful of instruments included some of Joe's original instruments. When speaking with people looking to start their own instrument library, Snyder is realistic about the challenges they may face. You know, if they do end up having a conversation with you and you're saying, well, okay, you, you got to have a space. You got to have a space large enough. Um, you you got to have be able to store them. So you need racks. You need all this. It's capital intensive to set it up. So they'd have to go out and find seed money. They have to get a grant or a loan or, or not a loan, but you know a, a, a benefactor to say, hey, this is a great idea. Okay, and set it up. Um, and you know, and they would have to start really small. And sometimes when you start talking to them about it, and they think, like, holy, this is a lot more than I thought it was going to be, you know. Um, because not only, if you've got the public coming in, you got to have liability insurance. We're, we're operating a business. And someone comes in and gets a sliver in their finger and decides they're going to sue us. Okay, well, the directors are, 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 
are personally liable for, you know, doesn't mean that they can, they'll win or be successful, but I mean, still, these are considerations that we have. So there's a lot of stuff to go on um, to successfully set one up. And if, if I were going to give any advice, it would be start small. You know, like 10 or 15 instruments or something like that, and then let it grow. One group that has seen success is the Musery, an instrument lending library founded as a memorial for John Pike, one of the original members of the American rock band Ra Ra Riot. His sister and brother-in-law, Tom Jones, operate the lending library out of the basement of their home in Hamilton, Massachusetts. I spoke with Tom over the phone. My name is Tom Jones. Um, I'm the executive director of the Musery, um, and we are a lending library of musical instruments. Um, basically, uh, we lend instruments, no strings attached, That's the tagline, and basically it's as easy as checking out a library book. Uh, we started in 2008, um, in memory of my brother-in-law, John Pike, uh, who was a founding member of the rock band Ra Ra Riot. Uh, he was a drummer by trade, but he could play any instrument that he got his hands on. And um, after he passed away, um, we kind of thought of what uh, what could be done that would kind of that he would like. And um, he was always looking for in more instruments to play and everything like that so uh, that's kind of how we kind of came up with that idea to work for us in our situation it was originally out of um my in-laws basement where john grew up um a lot of his instruments have now been repurposed for our cause so it was just kind of a natural um place to start and um since we we've gotten to been able to get a bigger space uh with with us, um, we moved it there, and eventually the goal is to have a physical, a actual library space, and people can come in and out with practice studios and, and things like that, um, and have it be more like a, um, a teaching facility and do lessons and, and things like that. You know, we're a 501c3 corporation, so we're in the process of um, forming and writing grants and things like that to get these uh, other programs funded. Um, so it's a process, like anything, and um, before that happens, we can run the day-to-day -day as is now, but obviously the goal is to get bigger and better. Well, we have a few projects on the, on the pipeline here that we're really trying to, to find. Like I said, the, the space is kind of um, first and foremost, um, and just to you know, gather more instruments. Uh, that's the biggest thing. So we can we can really serve more people. I hate having to turn anybody away. In a perfect world, there's a musery next to every library in the country. <laughs> um, I think the model works. Uh, it can it can work in other parts of the country and even beyond. Um, I think music education is very important. Um, for everybody, really, um, in all aspects of life, and it's a great hobby that you can do your whole life. Yes, uh, that's always been the goal. Uh, it, everything all-encompassing of music. Um, you know, some people might not necessarily love to play an instrument, but they have an ear, and they love the, the, the recording side, and you could learn how to produce and, and use the the tools that are available in the, the music industry today and um, we can have band camps and, and kind of clinics and instruction and, and all that which would be great yeah I think I mean my wife and I we both have other full time jobs and um, but this is definitely uh, life's passion for us so we'd love to see it grow um, I would have loved to, for it to even go a little faster but um, it's important to establish a strong base I think before we, we move too quickly but um, so far so good and we serve more and more people every year uh, like I said we're up to over a thousand borrowers and um, we saved um families with the instruments that we've lent over 150,000 
Um, so not, not, I don't think it's too bad for just a couple people kind of working on the side. Um, and really, I think giving back to the community is, is, is reward enough, I think. We just heard from Tom Jones, the executive director of the Musery, a Massachusetts-based instrument lending library. Jones visits local schools to promote the library and encourage young people to take up music. The Musery is a memorial for John Pike, a founding member of the band Ra Ra Riot. If you're looking for more information, check out themusery.org. Here's a demo version of St. Peter's Day Festival, the last song Pike recorded before his death. Please be aware there is an expletive in this track. I'm closing the door. <laughs> if I go to cluster, I know I will wait there for you. The no. oh, fuck. <laughs> Shit. If I go to cluster, I know I will wait there for you. The road line is waiting there too. You know it's one tonight with waiting. It all falls apart. If I go to Gloucester, I know I will wait there for you. The rum line is waiting there too. Till it's worth the night we're waiting. It all falls apart. Come on, come on. January 21st, 2015, the Tet Center for Creativity and Learning opened its doors at 370 King Street West here in Kingston, Ontario. A refurbished brewery and distillery on the shores of Lake Ontario, the center houses the Kingston Art Council, Kingston School of Dance, Modern Fuel Art Gallery, Theatre Kingston, and, among others, the Joe Chitlin Memorial Instrument Lending Library, which was previously located in the Robert Meek Community Center on Bagot Street, next to the Boys and Girls Club. The new space marks a new and exciting phase for Joe's Mill, now an established local charity with a modern professional space to call their own. I caught up with Roger Eccleston, the instrument librarian, to chat about the new space and the future of Joe's Mill. Yeah, there's there's a couple of changes from the the previous uh, room there. Uh, Because of the the, the nature of the old building there and us being down in the basement, we couldn't tap into the brickwork of the walls and that itself. a very, very old building there. Uh, so we, we had a lot of our guitars and stringed instruments on racks on the floor that gave us a very little floor space. Uh, we've had a little bit more freedom here right from the get-go with an empty room. Uh, so uh, with a big nod of thanks to uh, Renaissance Music, uh, they supplied us with a whole load of slap wall to go around most of the walls of the room there and some hangers to get us started. And so now we're able to display a lot of our, most of our guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, display them on the wall. The moving day was ridiculously smooth. The guys came a few minutes before they were scheduled, whole gang of them came in, bang, 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 room was empty in an hour and a half. And uh, all, all loaded in down here at the other end. The moving day was a, a dream. Now comes unpacking and sorting. 
A, a lot of people had volunteered to, to, to help us actually carry stuff down here, but uh, that, that wasn't practical for a number of reasons. So what we had them do is just sign the instruments out and take them home for a couple of months. Bring them back once we're established, that's working nicely. Definitely a, a, a profound uh, stage in, in our existence. Uh, there's, there's basically been just just three uh, three stages of, of life. When the concept first started, when uh, when Wally High first put the uh, the idea together, there was a bunch of instruments in a closet at St. Lawrence College, and he basically went to the front desk there, and looked at a photograph of the the, the instrument, and it had a number. They go to the closet, and you'd sign it out from there. And then the Boys and Girls Club uh, uh, let us have the space at uh, the Robert Meek Community Youth Centre. And we were in there about 12 years. And uh, that developed a whole lot over the years there. And the Boys and Girls Club uh, bent over backwards to, to make the room more accommodating for us. And uh, they installed a whole load of new stuff to, uh, to make the room uh, much more accommodating for us. And they got it just about to perfection when we, uh, we, we, we when our lease was up, and we got the opportunity to move down here. So I, I would say this is a this is a major move, yeah. While putting together this documentary, I met a number of passionate local residents. I'd like to thank everyone who sat down for an interview: Arwen and Jenny Robinson, Chris Trimmer, Roger Eccleston, Terry Snyder, and Tom Jones. If you're looking for more information, check out joesmill.wordpress.com. Call 1-613-549-5637 or drop by the library at 370 King Street West in the bottom floor of the Tet Centre in Kingston, Ontario. I'd like to thank Brendan Wilson, Brenna Owen, Christiana Clemens, Paisley Thompson, and everyone at CFRC 101.9 in Kingston. This broadcast was made as part of the Robert Black Residency Program. When I asked Roger about the future of the Musical Instrument Lending Library and music accessibility, he said he would simply like to see them continuing to provide the service that they do. One, one thing that we have done over recent years is uh, encourage people to start up similar programs to the uh, Joe Chetland Memorial Musical Instrument Lending Library in different places. And we've always said that we will help in any way we can with our software, with our experience, and uh, because of the generosity of the, uh, the Kingston population, we, we have uh, and continue to get donation after donation after donation. We have 750 plus items now and new stuff coming in virtually every day. Uh, we do get overcapacity in some instruments uh, that, that, that aren't in high demand. And uh, what we've, we've said we, we will do to anybody wanting to start up a pro program similar to ours, that we would provide a starter package on a long loan slash permanent loan basis. So one thing I personally would like to see is every community on the planet have a, a similar thing where beginners can go and borrow an instrument and learn to play music on it. Uh, it's a big dream, but I'd like to see that.